The house that I grew up in was in a middle to upper class neighborhood in a smaller sized town uh, that looked picturesque like it would be on a postcard. Old Victorian homes and places that you would visit and take pictures of and brag about to your friends. But what they didn't know is that if you walked inside of my home, it was anything but a postcard. I was trafficked by my mom from ages six to 18. My mom was a nurse who helped everyone else, but she never helped me. Human trafficking is a $150 billion a year industry. There are 40 million people enslaved in the world today. Human trafficking can and does happen anywhere. Sex trafficking and labor trafficking happen all around us. This is happening in our neighborhoods, um, in residential homes and apartment buildings, but it's also happening in commercial areas, in your local communities, in your local businesses, from illicit massage businesses uh, to neighborhood brothels that are run out of homes. Uh, this type of crime is happening everywhere. When we think about labor trafficking, you will have forced labor in some of the local restaurants in your community, or even sometimes in nail parlors. Domestic servitude is all too common, as is forced labor in factories, out in the fields, or in a variety of businesses. So what we need to understand is that this is a very local crime. And whether you're a van operator, pro-home mover, or a professional within the in-home delivery space, such as furniture, exercise equipment, appliances, or other bulky goods delivery, we need your help to identify these victims, to recognize them, and then report to the authorities in hopes that we can help end their nightmare. People are afraid to get involved and to intervene in someone's life because maybe that makes them responsible for the outcome. Being made to feel like I was completely invisible and that I didn't matter, that was profound. Human trafficking is the exploitation of human beings through force, fraud, or coercion for the purposes of either commercial sex or forced labor. And you have a third party, a trafficker, a victimizer, basically a predator, who is making a profit off of their back. And these victims find themselves in situations they literally cannot get out of. So if someone from the outside was entering into my home that I grew up in, what would have stood out for them were immediately entering into the kitchen. There was a flat screen TV that had pornography that was looping on there throughout the day. It was usually images from my bedroom, so it wasn't just a random scene. And then if you walked farther into the house and you got to my bedroom, there weren't really pictures. There weren't really toys or dolls, but mostly that bedroom and the closet next to it was like a large storage closet. It had camera equipment that rolled all the time. There were live mics that they told me that they could hear everything I ever said, so not to say anything bad. And it, really brought fear into my heart. Inside the bedroom uh, on the nightstand there were performance pills for the men to take if they felt that they needed it during uh, the filming. They would pay extra for certain acts or uh, certain experiences so there would be uh, equipment or the things that they would need but it would never be commonplace materials, you would walk into that bedroom and you would immediately think, why are there sex toys out in a little girl's bedroom? Normal people that I know now in loving relationships, even if they have items like that, they don't leave it on display. To the sides of my bed and further down the hallway of the bedroom, there were piles of sheets and towels that were used that needed to be washed. Going into the bathroom, there were used condom wrappers, used condoms or fresh ones if someone needed them.
but there was a pink toothbrush on the counter with that sparkly little girl toothpaste that encouraged you to brush your teeth. But uh, I loved that. But past that, that was the only thing that said that that was my bathroom. The rest of it looked like a brothel. Force is everything you think about, right? When you hear that word. Force is beatings, rape, gang rape. Victims have been shot, stabbed, tortured in unimaginable ways, forced into isolation, forced into drug addiction. Anything that that trafficker is going to do to make that victim comply, they will do it. Fraud is the promise of one thing, but the delivery of something else. False employment offers, lying, promises of a better life. When in reality, all that trafficker wants is to exploit that victim. By far and away, coercion is the most powerful means that traffickers use to keep their victims compliant. These are the psychological abuses, right? where the pimp or the trafficker plays the daddy or the boyfriend role. I love you. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to make all of your dreams come true. When in reality, they take that trust that they have earned in the grooming process and they use it to exploit and profit off of their victim. Coercion is also the threats to life the threats to safety, the threats to a family member. You don't do this, I'm gonna kill your child. You don't do this, I'm gonna kill your little sister. Oftentimes, the trafficker knows where their victims live. They may know their family members. And so the victim finds themselves in a place where if I don't do this, if I don't make my quota, if I don't comply, this trafficker means business and they will take action. They will harm my family. They will harm me. They will harm someone I love. What makes people vulnerable to sex uh, trafficking, human trafficking is um, low self-esteem. It could be runaways. It could have drug activity where they've been involved in drugs. Homeless youth, women and girls of color, um, and also peer pressure can be involved in it too. Uh, when you have kids, especially with the um, LGBTQ, um, those kids um, pretty much could be where they're at home and parents, uh, loved ones, kind of push them away because of where they are with their um, sexual preferences and they feel embarrassed and they're looking for someone to love them, looking for somebody to be able to interact with and they, they go to um, these human traffickers. Uh, they find them as a easy target. These kids are looking for somebody to love them, somebody to, to, to show them that, hey, I care about you. And human tra traffickers, they target these kids um, to the point where they know that I can offer you something that your parents are not offering you. Many times in my story of human trafficking, People would think, of course they didn't have a housekeeper. Of course they didn't have someone from the outside come in and clean their house. But we did. Her name was Beth. She was an older woman that probably looked like the older women that we run into the grocery store all the time. I don't know what she was paid, um, but I do know that she came at least once a week. She was responsible for cleaning the sheets and towels. There's no mistaking the smell of those sheets and towels. If she had called, she wouldn't have been responsible for an outcome, maybe just responsible for making a nightmare stop. I wish she had. Um, I don't hold any ill will towards her because I think that people can't be responsible for the knowledge that they don't know or don't understand. But now, with the increased ability to train people about human trafficking, I do have a hope that people are just willing to make a call just to say that something's not right. Not that she would have been responsible for my life radically changing right at that instant, but to treat me like a human being. Because 
the thing that the traffickers did well is that they made me feel special and important and like they couldn't do what they needed to do without me. But no one who was ordinary made me feel loved or valued. We had movers come into our house occasionally. Sometimes it was just to move heavy items from one room to another. It wasn't always to move the whole house. You knew that they know. You knew that they saw something that didn't make sense. There's no way that you could have explained my house and my bedroom as anything other than what it was. It was a production studio that happened to have a bed in it. But what if instead they looked at it and thought that little girl's life is worth changing? Truckers Against Trafficking is the largest mobile army of eyes and ears of professional drivers out there on the road dedicated to discovering and disrupting human trafficking networks. And what we have found with over-the-road truck drivers is that once they understand the crime of human trafficking and they know how to report it, that they will actually turn around and do so. And we have seen countless victims who have been identified, calls made into the hotline because truckers took the time to get involved and care. And so we are asking you, join us, join our mobile army. Be those eyes and ears. As professional van operators, movers, and in-home delivery personnel, we know you are not only traveling the highways and local roads, you are in and out of commercial areas and neighborhoods. And you are also in a place our mobile army hasn't been before, in homes. We need your industry to become empowered with this information. Law enforcement cannot be everywhere at once. It is imperative that we, the general public, that we become activated, that we are looking, that we care enough to get involved and make a call that could help end the nightmare for a victim of human trafficking. One of the number one signs to be on the lookout for is any minor who is selling commercial sex. There is no such thing as a child prostitute. That child needs the adults in and around them to stand up for them and make a call on their behalf. Any individual under the age of 18 being sold for sex is a victim of human trafficking. So other indications of a residential brothel are those homes that seem a bit isolated from the rest of the neighborhood. You never see kids playing out in the yard. You know, it only seems that um, large groups of women live there. Not really family situations taking place. It's different cars constantly coming and going at all times of day and night. And typically only men coming and going from the residents. Again, these are all indicators that human trafficking could be taking place. Do you see a bedroom or a separate area from the rest of the family home that appears to be in different condition, like a different standard of living, cleanliness, the number of personal items other than the family bedrooms? Is there a mattress on the floor or is it a substandard arrangement in the basement or the garage that appears to be the bedroom of a particular family member? Are there multiple people living in close quarters that seem to have a different standard of living than other people in the household? Is there evidence of excessive security at the home? Is there a bedroom or a part of the home that has a lock on the outside of the room rather than on the inside? Is there evidence that appears to indicate that the person is only a guest in the home? Are there certain people at the property who are not as engaging as other people in the family, as if they've been told not to or they're unable to communicate for themselves? Another red flag that someone may notice in a house is windowless bedrooms that uh, happen in the house, which wouldn't be typical. You may see lots of fast food containers and bags and throwaway takeout bags and not many home-cooked meals. If you looked into the cabinets, maybe there's not much food to make fresh material. Potentially, 
the trafficker may live in the main bedroom and he has the clothing of the women in that bedroom so he has power and control over what he chooses for someone to wear but you actually have to walk by that main bedroom to get to the other people's bedrooms where there's not a lot of privacy and security for the other people of the house everyone would know what is going on because they have to go by that first bedroom for those of you who are approaching a residence are you hearing any kinds of shouting or yelling or even screaming are you overhearing threats being made? Do you hear anyone asking for help? Also, pay attention to what you might see, like any potential victims that may be visible. Do you see anyone who looks distressed or upset, crying or fearful? Again, not every instance may be human trafficking per se, but these types of signs should be your first indication to look for additional red flags. If you've witnessed a crime in progress, I absolutely recommend calling 911. If a child is unsafe, if an adult is unsafe, if you're witnessing a crime in progress, every moment matters. So calling 911 can get the fastest response possible. If you're not sure what you've noticed is a crime, you can call the National Human Trafficking Hotline at 1-888-373 7888 and talk to a trained professional there that can help you make the decision of what to do with the information of what you've seen. If you have any suspicions that maybe I'm not right or what if I make the wrong choice, the wrong choice is not making a call at all. If you're wrong and it's not human trafficking, it was 10 minutes out of your life in comparison to memories that they have to live with for forever. When you see something, you know, say something. Calling several days later, um, it's still helpful, but it's not as helpful as it would be when the act is actually going on. Uh, the make of the car, the model of the car, um, the description of the person that's getting out of the vehicle, what you see going on uh, at the residence, how long the person is there, um, and what you suspect is important. I believe that any individual who comes into contact with a potential victim has the opportunity to treat someone who's not used to being treated with dignity and compassion. Having the opportunity to quite simply say, are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Do you need to sit down? Do you want to rest a bit? Having the opportunity to be treated like I matter that can make all the difference in the world. Because I promise you, more than my story of exploitation, I remember people's kindness. Still, to this day, I remember their kindness more than I want to remember the people that hurt me. Do not put yourself in harm's way. Don't try to intervene. Just make the phone call. Just be our eyes. Report what you see. Well, again, maybe one red flag isn't necessarily evidence of a crime. But if you start to see two or three of these red flags mount up, make the call. As a father, I would want you to make that phone call if it was my child. Think about it if it was your child. Would you want that phone call to be made by someone else? I need you. I implore you to make that phone call. You know, I think the biggest thing for me is that if one adult, even one, had made a call of what they suspected, even if they couldn't prove it, my life would have changed drastically. It's okay to be wrong. I promise you, being a law enforcement myself, we will not get angry at you. But what if you were right? Being trafficked from 6 to 18 and now to be told that I'm visible and I'm seen and that I matter and that my story matters. If there can be one phone call made on behalf of another victim, if their nightmare can end one day sooner, it would be worth it. <laughs>